me again. So, okay, question time. I'm going to answer three questions because, well, I only got three questions despite all my begging and pleading. So please, if you end up liking this, please send in more questions. Even if you asked a question for this round, I'll still answer them. Um, yeah, so, and it can be anything about writing. It doesn't have to be specifically about me. It can be about, you know, writing in general, uh, self-publishing, podcasting, I don't know, whatever. Okay, so anyway, that's me begging you to interact with me. Please be my friend. Um, so the first question was, what kind of microphone or what microphone do you use to record your podcast? Okay, hold on. Got to go over to the prop department here. Um, I use this little guy. It's so cute, right? Hold on. And it's got these little legs that stand up. So you don't need a microphone stand or anything. It's pretty convenient. Um, it's the Samson Meteorite. And it's like, seriously, how cute can you get? It's like three inches tall. Um, it does get really good reviews. It's a condenser microphone, uh, which means it's pretty sensitive and it picks up everything. Um, so like when I record, it has to be really quiet. So I've got to turn the heat off. I've got to like, you know, duct tape the cat's mouths. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Um, but yeah, it's a great little microphone. It's like, and seriously for this tiny little thing, it is heavy and it's, it's all metal. So it's a great little thing. It's, I think it was like 50 bucks too. So this, you know, it's not the cheapest microphone you can get, but for the price you pay, it records pretty well. Um, so that was the techie question. Yay. So, um, my, uh, the next question came in from Jonathan Pongratz, who is also an indie author and you should check out his books. Um, he's become quite my little internet buddy, um, emailing back and forth about various writerly issues. Um, so he asked, you know, what is your typical day like? Well, I don't have a typical day. <laughs> um, I do write full time, so I don't have a, a real job. Um, I can't remember what I was going to say. I um, Basically, I work around my husband's work schedule. Uh, so kind of doing a nine to five thing during the pandemic. That was really weird because he was home all the time because he couldn't go into work. Uh, so <laughs> I had to kind of work around that. But now he's mostly back to work. And so my schedule is pretty much, I get up between six or 6.30, usually because the cats have woken me up. So then I kind of stagger around cursing at the cats, doing all the morning things, feeding them, brushing my teeth. I do a few exercises just to kind of get going, um, eat breakfast. And then in the morning, I'll do, I'll do just like a little kind of quick housekeeping kind of work stuff, like, you know, checking my email, uh, maybe posting on social media, that sort of thing. Nothing too in depth, just something I can do like really quick, like within, <coughs> sorry, within like maybe five or 10 minutes. Um, then what do I do? Oh, then, yeah, huh, I try to forget this, but it does happen every day. Um, I, then I go either for a walk or a run for an hour and because I want to get it over with as soon as possible. Um, then I come back and in the mornings I'll typically, it depends on kind of what I'm working on. Like really, I, every day is different. Um, I'll go through periods where, you know, I have a couple weeks where I'm just writing pretty much every day. I'll have weeks where I'm just not doing, I'm kind of in between drafts, so I'm not doing any writing at all. So those weeks I'm just doing random businessy things and there are so many little things you do as an independent writer that are just crazy, like, you know, book blurbs, book covers, you know, checking your categories, updating your mailing list, all this applying for promos. I can't even remember what I do with sometimes. But so in the morning, depending on whether or not I'm working on a, how deep I'm working on a book, I will either spend doing some sort of quick businessy kind of thing, like, you know, put, making a blog post or something, or I'll jump right into writing. Um, <clears throat> sorry again, little frogs. Um, I know the advice is usually to get your writing done as soon as possible. 
you know, people talk about getting up at five in the morning and writing straight away. But my brain doesn't work like that. Um, I like to, how do you describe it? I like to get all the little chores out of the way because for me, the writing is the fun part of my job, which it should be if you're a writer. Um, so I try to get all the chores done first because then it's kind of like I get to play after the chores are done. So if there are little things I need to do, I try to get them done first thing. Um, if I don't really have much chores to do, then I will just kind of jump right into the writing, like I said, or editing. I spend more time editing than writing, so um, as I think most writers will agree with. So the morning is spent doing something, <sighs> obviously. Uh, I usually go to take lunch. I eat lunch pretty early because I'm hungry from doing the hour-long run. So I take lunch pretty early. Um, during my lunch break, I might do some chores around the house. You know, the glamour. Um, and then the from like noon to kind of two, I'll be, you know, I try to work on something that requires sort of like in-depth thinking, you know, so I can just sit and concentrate on that. Um, that's usually a writing project. Um, and then mid-afternoon, I try to take another break. I usually will try to get out in the yard or do some other form of exercise just to, you know, I really like to get outside because my office space, as you can see, it's kind of dark. I'm standing right in front of the window to get any light right now. So I like to get outside, try to get a little bit of sunshine, even if it's you know, not terribly sunny out because this is Portland, Oregon. Um, then in the late afternoon, I'll, yeah, I'll try to do whatever I can, just writing again. And um, my day, work day, kind of ends usually around 4.30 or 5. Then it's time to cook dinner. Um, eating dinner. And then the evenings, I don't really, I try not to work in the evenings. Evenings are, you know, time to spend with my husband or just chilling out. Uh, but sometimes, sometimes if there's like something little to do, like, you know, looking up something, sometimes I'll be looking up graphics for a book cover or um, just kind of researching something. But generally, I try not to. And as for weekends, I don't really have one. Um, I <laughs> just kind of over the pandemic, since my husband wasn't working a normal schedule, I just ended up working seven days a week. And for me, that really hasn't stopped. I do generally work a little less on the weekends, um, maybe stop around two or just, you know, don't work on any in-depth kind of projects, but it depends on how deep into a book I am. Cause sometimes when I'm redoing a draft, I just want to read as quickly as possible because, or as much as possible because it keeps all the ideas in my head of what has happened before. Anyway, that's a long winded answer. And I don't know if I answered the question that you were hoping for. So, um, if not, then you can ask a different one. <laughs> um, the next question, and this is the question of the month. When I put out the call for questions, I expected, you know, things like, what is your typical day like? Uh, what's your favorite color? No, maybe not. What's your favorite color? But sort of things like that. Right out of the gate, I get this question from my Twitter buddy, Bertold Gambrel, who is also a writer and... You should really check out his short stories because they're pretty, pretty good. Um, Berthold comes right out of the gate and asks, what would Cassie do? What would Cassie Black do if she got stuck in Osteria or she found herself in Osteria? I can't remember the exact wording, but that was the basic idea. And I was just like, what? <laughs> I'm like, that's an awesome question because I don't know the answer immediately. Um, so if you don't know what Osteria is, Osteria is the world of my two historical fantasy series, Domna and the Osteria Chronicles. Um, it's a future world set in the Pacific, it's the future Pacific Northwest. And what has happened is society, civilization has basically collapsed. There's been a drastic population reduction. Um, and as society rebuilt, it, sort of, I imagined it rebuilding, sort of following the same time, you know, idea, timelines as 
we did in the past. And so they've now, they've advanced to sort of like a Greco-Roman culture. And so, and of course the Greek gods have come and gotten involved and are meddling in things as they do. So what would Cassie Black do in this world? Well, first off, Cassie Black is a bit snarky and she's got a bit of an attitude, as you might have noticed if you read The Undead Mr. Tenpenny. So I think she would immediately get in trouble with one of the gods, and I'm thinking she's probably going to get in trouble with Hera because Hera's not very forgiving about things. Uh, she's going to say one thing wrong and she's going to be on Hera's poop list for probably decades because Hera holds a grudge, seriously. That, that goddess, she's got issues. Um, and as far as how she would handle the world of Osteria, I think she would do okay. Uh, she's not terribly reliant in her current life, you know, in her normal life. She's not terribly reliant on modern things because she doesn't really have the money to buy them. So she doesn't have a car. So she's used to getting around on foot or by bike. And I imagine she'd probably adapt to getting around on horseback. Although she's pretty tall and lanky, so she might look kind of odd on the horse, but she'll 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 adapt. Um, her cell phone never works anyway, so she's not going to have any problem ditching the phone. And the one thing I think she would have trouble with, though, is that you know it's the society has collapsed, so there's no sugar trade anymore. Cassie likes her sweets, so she's gonna have to get by on like hopefully some honey cakes or something like that. But I think the sugar withdrawal is probably gonna be the worst for her when she goes to Osteria. So that's the questions. I hope I kind of answered them. And please send more because this was fun. It was a nice, you know, thought process of, you know, coming up with ideas. And yeah, all right. So off to whatever else you have to do today. Send in more questions. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.